Now I know when you clicked on this video, you totally did not expect to see someone talking about Pam from The Office, played by the gorgeous Gemma Fisher. Gemma? Jenna Fisher. And she's probably the last person that you'd expect to come out of this conversation. But hear me out. Fisher is absolutely beautiful. She is a few steps away from the effortlessly stunning ingenue we see in many rom-coms. It's not like all she has to do is take off her glasses and then she just steps out onto the runway. While all other heroines and romantic storylines are usually hot above everything else, Pam is normal above everything else. And I'm not trying to insult Jenna Fisher by making this video. She is such an amazing actress that we're not even talking about Jenna Fisher. We are talking about Pam as an isolated character. This is a really rare facet of female character representation we hadn't seen before The Office aired. And thank God the casting director told Jenna to come in and to please look normal. Pam's character also highly contrasts Karen's character in the third season. And though at first glance they're great friends and they seem very compatible and similar, Karen's character subscribes to the naturally effortlessly amazing girl, the perfect romantic interest, while Pam is grounded in the reality of the average woman. We can relax around Pam, we can relate to Pam and be comfortable around her, which for one of the first times ever is seen as a good thing. It's seen as her superpower. In fact, for a real life example of this, I was sitting and talking to my guy friend the other day. I was telling him that I didn't feel as pretty as another friend of ours, which I know is a petty conversation, but I was feeling insecure, okay? And he replied by saying, well, we wouldn't be friends if you looked like a runway model. I would be too intimidated. You made me feel right at home from the beginning. Now, depending on what your mindset is whenever you receive this information that I just relayed to you, some people might think it's very sweet. I felt like I just got slapped in the face. And you know, I still wonder, why did I feel that way? And as we already covered in a previous video, being pretty doesn't really have any moral attributes attached to it. And then Pam enters the scene. She isn't fashionable, she isn't charming or show-offy. <laughs> Boscovs at the Seam Town Mall. You sure look good on the mannequin. <laughs> well, you have good taste. Well, thanks. Yes, she has a good sense of humor, but she doesn't have a sassy comeback on the tip of her tongue like Lucene and a lot of other heroines before her. In fact, she's shy and a little dorky. Yet Jim still chooses her. And during the course of the show, we're shown again and again and again how nurturing and gentle and loving Pam is. Wait, here, let me help you, Dwight. Come okay, on. Pam, I'm get, get up. Get up. You get the bath. Yeah. Just keep them away. It smells like chicken soup. I know. I have to go to the hospital. I know. Where are we going? I just want to say goodbye, okay? Well, I'll be back. I mean... Yes, I know, but it's going to be different. Why? It's just hard to explain. Oh, Pam, you're adorable. Oh, you? my goodness. <laughs> it's through this that she's one of the truly most unique heroines I've ever come across. Dude, there is no way that Jim is just back here to hang out with Pam. Oh, you did not just say that. You don't know Pam, she is really cool. In fact, if we compare Pam to Karen Filippelli's character in season three, we see that Karen fulfills the more conventional Hollywood mold of what a girlfriend should be. Call of Duty. Beautiful, stylish, charming, smart, witty, loves Call of Duty, speaks French, all while being incredibly fit and also embracing her sexuality with Jim. And within that triangle, I really loved the idea that their looks didn't really matter to Jim. That didn't really play a part in who he ended up with. The personality and compatibility played the main part in who he chose. And I think especially with my own life, I've gotten fooled again and again and again by taking grand Hollywood storylines as gospel and thinking that if I were just pretty enough, if I were just amazing enough, then I could get someone to love me. All right, next, Tina Belcher. <laughs> awkward or relatable character than Tina Belcher. Let's, let's, let's see your everything is okay face. Um, no, 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 that's, that's not, that's, no, that's bad. No, don't do that face. Like this? No, just stop doing a face. This? And stay with me here by the grill. That way your sweat will look more natural. Truly an icon. 
What I love about Tina is that, again, like Pam, she's average in almost every way. And though throughout the course of Bob's Burgers, she had plenty of opportunities to become like Meg in Family Guy, her family supports her the whole way through it. They're like geese. <laughs> Should I show you them? It almost looks like um, a glitch in the matrix. Like they look the same. Look at those boys. Anyway, in the beginning of the series, Tina is seen as a really awkward, insecure teenager. And throughout the course of the show, she gains a lot of confidence while looking exactly the same. I'm sick of acting like a dumb, helpless girl just so a hot boy who dances his feelings will notice me. That's not who I am. I'm a smart, strong, sensual woman. And she realizes that she has inherent value as a person, not because of her looks or anything she does or any skills that she may or may not have, but because she's a human being. All right, next, Missy from Big Mouth. So for those of you who haven't watched Big Mouth, it is a show about puberty and has some adult content. So if you're gonna watch it, which I highly recommend you do because it is hilarious, especially the first season, just know it's a little risque. So I vividly remember the first episode I ever watched of Big Mouth and it was with one of my college roommates. And my college roommate prefaced the show by saying, okay, Jasmine, we need to watch the show together. I just need to sit down and I need to watch you watching it. And as we continued watching and we were introduced to Andrew's crush, Missy, Missy, Misty, did I write Missy? Did I say Missy? I said Missy, Missy. It is Missy. When we're introduced to Missy, which is Andrew's love interest. We see that she isn't a model. And I remember the first time watching this, I turned to my roommate and I was like, I love that he has a crush on her and that she's not a glamorous model. And she was like, I know, right? And it opened my eyes to how dangerous it is for movies to only display crush characters as ethereal, beautiful beings, because it gives us the notion that our self-worth is tied to how attractive of a person we can date and if we can bag the hot girl. In the first episode of Big Mouth, it's like he and Nick is feeling insecure about his size, so he has the courage to ask out the prettiest girl in eighth grade, even a grade above him, to uh -huh. the dance, and she says yes. And it, it was a symbol of how I spent a lot of my life, which was, yes, trying to get affirmation or validation for myself by getting who I thought to be the most attractive woman in the room or the most successful or yeah. whatever it is that... Yeah. Um, and it's in hopes, right, that you will somehow, uh, or at least for me, it's that, wow, if that person would like me, it would prove to me that I'm better than I feel like I am. Yes. So as a conclusion here, I would sort of like to touch on the advanced style movement. <laughs> Lately, I've been so hungry for color. I love, love leopard. Dyed to match cashmere sweaters and skirts. Rodarte is my current favorite. Versace, of course. I like wearing men's clothes. But what makes it less masculine, I wear like this wonderful brooch. So to give a little bit of context, this movement's goal is to give women, primarily aging women, the power to live their life to the fullest. And these amazing older women, they talk about not feeling pressured to fade into the background. Once you get older, people think you're on the scrap people, you're going to, you know, just fade into the background. But no, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually look good and feel good and do amazing things. My fear of growing old and obsolete melted away. In fact, these women made me aspire to grow old, which is, which is cool. 